Sanctuary for the Broken Hearted Ministries. There is one name I love to call. The name of Jesus, demons can't withstand. No other name I know can deliver at the mention of the name. Every knee must bow. At the name of Jesus, you are here. At the name of Jesus, you are the leader. At the name of Jesus, you are free. At the mention of the name. Every knee must bow <laughs> At the name of Jesus You are free At the name of Jesus You are delivered At the name of Jesus You are healed At the mention of the name Every knee must bow the atmosphere has changed now. Miracles are happening. Angels are around now. They are supplying us. Demons are screaming. The captives means are free. Demons are free. Captives means are free. The atmosphere has changed now. Miracles are happening. Can you see angels in the world? They are so blind. Oh, demons, please help me share the video as you come on. Tonight's topic is the ministries of the angels. What do the angels do for us? That's what we're going to be teach. I'm going to be teaching tonight. Um, Bola Akerele. You're welcome. God bless you. Please appreciate this video. We're going to be teaching. I'm teaching tonight on the ministries of the angels. You know, some people just think uh, we just have a guardian angel. There are more to angels than that. So we're going to study that tonight. Uh, Sister Cynthia, you're welcome. Please help me share the video. We're going to be teaching. This is School of Prophets. Um, as many of you know that last year, I think it was during the pandemic, the Spirit of God mandated me to start coaching young prophets that are coming out from the cave. Those that have been in wilderness, the Lord is bringing them in for such a time as this. And God is asking me to begin to equip them, to begin to teach them. Because some prophets really, maybe they just know they are called as a prophet. They didn't, um, they have not really been coached. They have not been um men surge they don't have people that uh they are you know they are shattering because the ideal uh mode of prophets really is between elijah and elisha so elisha was under the tutorial of um elijah so and that was the ideal for us but a lot of people these days they don't you know they just know that they are called as a prophet and then they jump right in it before i start the coach tonight i have a little announcement to make if you are a pastor, you are a minister of God in the United Kingdom. We have an association called, organization called Canuk, which represents Central Association of All Nigerians in the UK. That is one big umbrella where everybody that, um, if you have a ministry, if, you, if it's some states are involved, if you have a business, we come under this umbrella and it's called Canuk. So Canuk is asking us, the religious, uh, the clergymen, the clergymen, if you're here in UK, to come under this umbrella. This umbrella is, is recognized by um, Nigerian embassy here in the UK. So if you have a need, the embassy will be involved. They'll be here. We have already we have a big body that will be part of. It's a, fa a big family really that will come under. So. For me to be able to register us as clergy, we need at least 20 ministries. So please, if you're interested, inbox me. 
I'm going to announce it again towards the um, end of this program. And I hope that, you know, we are not going to be left out. Let us, the, uh, the clergy, the ministers of God, let's have a voice to in the Nigerian embassy. Let's have a voice with Kanuk. Kanuk is a, a big umbrella. I've, you know, I've known Kanuk for several years now. I was part of it before I went to Nigeria. But when the chairman of Kanuk, um, IEO, Akin Fe, um, co contacted me and asked me to organize it, can I help to organize the clergy in the UK, Nigerian clergy? So if you're a clergyman, clergywoman, please get in touch and you're interested in joining this big umbrella. That's the umbrella that encompasses every Nigerian that is living here in the UK. That's the short announcement. So now I'm back to the teaching session tonight. You're welcome, welcome tonight. We are going to be dealing with the subject, the ministries of the angels. The ministries of the angel. Glory be to God. Let's say a short prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, my Lord and my King, my Savior, my Redeemer. Father, tonight I humble myself before your throne of grace and mercy. Lord, I yield my vocal cord to you. Father, may I not be seen tonight. May you be seen, Holy Spirit. Spirit of God, be the teacher. You are a perfect teacher. Teach us and give us great understanding and revelation in Jesus' name. I cover us with the blood of Jesus. I take charge of the airways tonight in the name of Jesus. Because according to your word in Luke 10 verse 19, it said, Behold, you have given us power and authority to trample upon serpents and scorpions at and upon all powers of darkness, and they shall by no means hurt us. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So tonight... We are going, I'm going to be speaking about the ministries. What are the ministries of an angel? What are the ministries of the angels? The work or ministry of angels with respect to humanity can be placed in three categories. They are God's agents. Angels are God's agents. That's category one. They are his, minist they are his min uh, messengers and also they are servants of God. So I'm going to slow down. There are three categories of angels we're going to be dealing tonight with. First of all, angels are God's agents here on planet Earth. They are also his, they are God's messengers. Angels are also servants of God. Now let's look at the first category, which is God's agents. As God's agents... Angel acts as executor of God's judgment. When God wants to judge the earth, he will send his angels. When God decreed judgment on humanity, often he will send angels to carry out this judgment. Let's look at one of the instances in the Bible. In the book of Genesis chapter 3, verse 24, after he drove them out, he placed on the east side of the Garden of Eden cherubim and a flaming sword flashing back and forth to guard the, the way to the tree of life. You know, when Adam and Eve, when they were driven out of the Garden of Eden, the Lord placed an angel with, with a has a fl uh, flame of the sword with, with, a sl uh, with a sword with a flashing of fire so that they could not go back in. So when God wants to bring judgment on earth, he will send angels. Angels are his agents here on earth. Angels, they judge the city of Jerusalem for their idolatry. When a nation is filled with idolatry, God will send an angel. As in Ezekiel chapter 9 verse 1 to 11. It's a long scripture. Just jot it down. You can study it later. Also, you know in the judgment of Sodom, and Gomorrah. Angels went to Sodom to pronounce judgment upon that city, evil city. When they were full of evil, God sent an angel to judge Sodom and Gomorrah. You can find this in Genesis chapter 19 verse 1, which I'm going to read. In the evening, the two angels came to Sodom, and Lot was sitting in the gateway of Sodom. When Lot saw them, he rose to meet them and bowed down with his face to the ground. That's the angel. 
when God wanted to destroy Sodom, he sent his agent, which is the angel. When those angels came, they acted as an angel of judgment. Because when God wants to judge the earth, or when God wants to judge um, a group of people, when he wants to judge some nations, he will send his angels. May we not be judged in Jesus' name. They act with authority. When angels were sent to do the will of God, they acted with authority. At the tomb of Jesus, two angels broke the Roman seal and rolled back the massive stone. This caused the entire God unit to faint. So it was two angels that the Lord sent from heaven that rolled the, 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 um, the tomb. The rolling, they rolled away the massive stone that was put at the entrance of the cave where Jesus' body was kept. So, and then, and suddenly there was a great earthquake for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. For fear of him, the gods shook and became like dead men. Matthew 28, verse 12, um, 2 and 4. You know when the angels came, the two angels that came to roll this massive stone that was placed in the tomb of Jesus. The guards that was that was placed there when they saw the angels, they lay there, they, they, you know, they lay as if they were dead. Why? They were so frightened. Mm -hmm. Secondly, you know, I told you that this angel, the work of these angels, God has classified it into three sections. Angels are in, they come as agents of God which we have just dealt with. Now we are going to God's messenger. God, angels are God's messenger. Angels bring message to humanity. This is in keeping with the meaning of the term angel. God has used angels to send the following messages to humanity. Divine revelation. God, when God wants to send um, a very important message, he will send his agent. He will send his messenger to us. So, when God wants to give us divine revelation, divine revelation has been given to, by angels. The matter, the matter Stevens said, You are the ones that have received the law as ordained my angels, but you have not obeyed it. So when, when Stephen was being stoned, he was telling the people that you are the ones that have, been, that have received the law as ordained by angels, but you have not obeyed it in Acts chapter 7 verse 53. Paul wrote to the Galatians, What purpose then does the law serve? It was added because of transgression. Until the seed should come to whom the promise was made, and it was appointed through angels by the hand of a mediator. Galatians 3 verse 19. In the book of Revelation, the introduction of the book of Revelation tells us that this final book of scripture was given through an angel. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which gave, which God gave to show his servants what must soon take place. He made it known by sending his angel to his servant John in the isle, when John was in the Isle of Patmos. God sent an angel to him. Revelation chapter 1, verse 1. Angels come as messengers, they come to announce great events. Angels announced, he came to announce the birth of Christ and the, John the Baptist. It was the angel that came to announce to Mary and Elizabeth. Hallelujah. So, in the book of Matthew chapter 1 verse 20 to 21, which I'm going to read. But after he, Joseph, had thought about these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not Fear to take Mary as your wife, for the child which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. And she shall bring forth a son, and she you shall call his name Je Jesus, for he, it is he himself that shall save his people from their sin. Matthew 1, verse 20 to 21. You know Mary was a, was a, was a virgin, but was betrothed to be married to Joseph. But Joseph found her to be with baby, to be pregnant. So when Mary, Joseph was planning quietly to put away Mary so that she would not be disgraced, God appeared to Joseph in the night 
and spoke to her, to, 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 to Joseph, through an angel. It was an angel that came to Joseph in the night. Joseph, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife. The baby, the child she's carrying, will be a savior to the world, and his name shall be called Jesus. That's one of the job of the the job of the angel. They act as messengers to us from God to us. And then another scripture in Luke one verse 13, eleven to thirteen. Then the angel of the Lord appeared there with him, standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zachariah saw him, he was terrified, and fear overcame him. But the angel said to him, "Do not be afraid, Zachariah, for your prayer has been answered. Your prayer has been heard." Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son and you will name him John. So it was another angel that came to Zechariah in the temple. So when God wants to give us um, important information, he will often send his messenger, Angel Gabriel. Hallelujah. Also, God uses his angels as warning to us. Angels gave warnings to God's people. In the book of Matthew, chapter 2, verse 13. Now, after they had let the angel of the Lord appear to Joseph in a dream and said, Get up, take the child and his mother, and escape to Egypt, and remain there until I tell you, for Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. You see, God sends angels to protect us. Because Jesus, the Lord knew that, God knew that, Jesus was in trouble. Herod was looking for him to be, to be destroyed. Then the Lord sent an angel to Joseph again. He tapped him and said, Joseph, take the baby quickly. Go cross over to Egypt and stay there until I bring a, another message to you. Okay? Angels, they bring us instructions. God uses angels to provide instruction. The Gentile Colonials received angelic instruction. He was commanded to send servant to Joppa to find Simon Peter. Acts chapter 3, Acts chapter 10, verse 3 said, One day at about 3 in the afternoon, he had a vision. Colonials had a vision. He distinctly saw an angel of God who came to him and said, Colonials. So it was God sent an angel to Colonials. In the book of Acts chapter 10 verse 3. And he asked Cornelius to send for um, Peter, Simon Peter. When God appeared to Cornelius, he said, Cornelius, your prayer had been answered. He has come as a memorial to me. So God sent an angel. But Peter was the one to deliver the message to, to come and explain the reason why the angels is being sent to him. Thirdly, God's servants. Angels are God's servants. Angels have also been used as God's servants. They have ministered to believers in the following ways. Rejoice at conversion. Angels are interested in the spiritual warfare of people to the point that they rejoice at their conversion. Jesus said, in the same way, I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Luke 15 verse 10. So each time it's, um, a person is saved, the angels, they are rejoicing in heaven. They are happy. Why? Because one soul has been won to the Lord. Hallelujah. So the role of the angel again, you know, they, they, the Lord said, they, they act as God's servants. They are sent to us when, during the conversion. Angels are rejoicing. When we have a crusade, and as many people that are giving their life, the angels in heaven, they are rejoicing. They are giving glory to God because a soul has been souls have been added to the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Prophetess Olushala, you're welcome. Tonight I'm teaching on the ministries, uh, ministering um what the ministering angels of God. What are their roles on the planet here? So angels have been used to give us physical provision. Remember in the book of First Kings. Chapter 19, verse 5 to 7. Then he, Elijah, lay down under the broom tree and fell asleep. Suddenly, an angel touched him and said to him, Get up and eat. He looked, and there, there at his head was a cake baked on hot stone and a jar of water. He ate and drank and lay down again. 
the angel of the Lord came a second time, touched him and said, get up and eat. Otherwise, the journey will be too much for you. God knew that Elijah, well, God was going to take him on a very long journey. With, and it's not going to be any food or, or provision. But God sent an angel to bake him a cake and gave him water. The second time he came again, fed Elijah. And that was sufficient for Elijah's journey ahead of him. So our God is a merciful God. It's our God is a compassionate God. He's a loving Father. Glory be to God. Angels have been sent to sustain people. After the Lord Jesus was tempted by the devil, angels were sent to sustain him. In the book of Matthew chapter 4, verse 11. Angels, then the devil left him. And suddenly angels came and begin, began to minister to him. You know when the devil came to tempt Jesus after he went on 40 days fasting day and night. After the devil left, the Lord sent ministering angels to minister to him. Glory be to God. Just like the Lord does to most of us as well. They act as physical protection. Angels have also been sent to protect God's people. In the book of Genesis chapter 16 verse 7, the angel of the Lord found Hagar near a spring of water in the desert the spring on the way to Shur. Remember, Hagar was a servant of um, Sarah. When she had um, Ishmael, she was sent packing with the baby. While she was in the desert, she was crying out to God because the baby was in his hand and her hand, and there is no water. And the angel came and ministered to Hagar. In Genesis chapter 16, verse 7. So, the two angels who visited Lot protected, protected both him and themselves by causing blindness to the men of Sodom. You know, in the book of um, Genesis chapter 19, verse 11, and they struck with blindness the men who were at the door of the house, young and old, so that they were unable to find the door. Because the Lord wanted to save um, Lot, he had to strike those people there with blindness so they will not be able to see so lot was rescued awesome is our god our god is a god of deliverance and so many of us god sent angels to rescue us when we're in trouble you know if our god is a god angels they act as as, as uh, they come to bring deliverance to us god has used angels as object of deliverance you know in the book of numbers chapter 20 verse 16 when we cried to the Lord, he heard our voice and sent an angel and brought us out of Egypt. Here we are in Kadesh, a town on the edge of your territory. Hallelujah. So God, whenever, whenever a nation is sin, just like Nigeria right now and some other nations of the world, we've, we've all sinned. Why? Because of innocent blood that we are shedding daily. And we are now, Nigeria has entered into judgment. And God, what he will do is, he will say when the people, you know, he said, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and turn away from their wicked ways, God will hear them and he will heal the land. He will, you know, he will heal the land. So the land will not be destroyed. So whenever we cry, as a people, when we cry to God, God will send us deliverance through angels. Hallelujah. The Lord also uses angels to deliver Peter and John from the hands of the services. Then the high priest and all his associates, the members of the party of the services, were filled with jealousy. They arrested the apostles and put them in jail. But during the night, the angel of the Lord opened the doors of the jail and brought them out. Acts chapter 5 verse 17 to 19. May the Lord bring us out of every captivity. May the Lord bring out of every jail that we are inside in the name of Jesus. Just like as the Lord sent these angels to bring Peter, John and Peter out of the, day of the jail. You know, the, the part of the assignment of the angels is deliverance. Hallelujah. What makes this episode of all, of all the more iconic, ironic is that the Sadducees do not believe in the existence of angels. And here you are. Because they don't believe in the, in the existence of angels, yet God sent an angel to, to confine them, to tell them, yes, there are, there are angels. 
They are ministering angels. Glory be to God. In Acts chapter 23 verse 8, uh, verse eight says, The Sadducees say that there is no resurrection or angel or spirit, but the Pharisees believe all the three. The Sadducees don't believe in angels. They don't believe in resurrection or spirit, but the Pharisees, they believe in resurrection. They believe in angels. Glory be to God. Angels are sent, sent also to give us direction. The Bible says that Philip was directed to the Ethiopian eunuch by an angel. In the book of Acts 8, verse 26. Then the angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go towards the south, to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So it was the angel that the Lord sent again to Philip. So, and Philip was sent to minister to the eunuch because the eunuch, even though he had the Bible, he didn't understand what he was reading. It was, it was Philip that the Lord sent through the angel, ministering of the angel. So angels also, they assist in answering our prayer. Hallelujah. On a couple of occasions, angels assisted in our answer to prayer. In the book of Daniel, we have the angel Gabriel explaining to Daniel the meaning of his prayer in Daniel chapter 9, verse 20, 20 to 27. We also find Peter being helped in his release from prison by an angel who was sent in response of his prayer. So whenever we have a problem, when we pray, God will send an angel for us. Hallelujah. Just like in Daniel, from the first day, Daniel started 21 day fasting. Then an angel was sent to him with his answered prayer. But the king of Persia withstood that angel for 21 days. But I love Daniel's spirit. Daniel continued with fasting. He continued bombarding heaven. He did not stop, even though his answer was being given. Then God sent an, another angel, um, angel. Angel Michael was sent to come and rescue this angel so that the message can be delivered to Daniel. We also find that Peter being helped in his release from prison by an angel who was sent in response to his prayer in Acts chapter 12 verse 1 to 11. So please write all these scriptures down so in your own time you can study it because the, 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 the ministering angel of the angel is very very important to us as human beings. Then the angels also, they act as, they come as, as interceding for us. In the book of Zechariah chapter 1 verse 12, Then the angel of the Lord said, O Lord of hosts, how long will you withhold mercy from Jerusalem and the city of Judah, with which you have been angry these 70 years? You see what the role of the angel was here. The angel was acting as an intercessor. And reminding God that these people in Jerusalem, you know, they've been in captivity for 70 years. The angel came and started to intercede. As in the book of um, Ezekiel chapter 22 verse 30, there about, yeah. That God is looking for a man or a woman or a child that will stand in the wall of intercession. So the land will not be destroyed. So when, when, whenever any nation is in, is in difficulty, God is looking at you and I to stand in the wall of intercession, to act, to stand in the wall of intercession, just like the angels are standing in the wall of intercession, interceding for nations. Hallelujah. Angels are also sent to encourage for encouragement. Angels also have been sent for encouragement. Oftentimes, when they appear to people, their first words will always be, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. The apostle Paul was encouraged by an angel after a storm at sea. In the book of Acts chapter 27 verse 23 to 25. For the last night, for last night there stood by me an angel of the Lord to whom I belong and whom I worship. He said, do not be afraid Paul. You must stand before the emperor. And indeed, God has granted you safety to all those who are sailing with you. So keep up your courage, men, for I have faith in God that it will be exactly as I've been told. 
you know when the ship the ship was almost shipwrecked and the people, Paul was inside this boat because <laughs> God sent an angel to give Paul advance notice to encourage him tell the people they're not going to perish even though the, co the, the boat is going to capsize they are not going to perish hallelujah so and the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon a discouraged and frightened man did you know Gideon in the book of Judges Judges chapter 6 verse 1 and 11 and 12 now the angel of the Lord came and stood and sat under the oak of Ophrah, which belonged to Joseph, the Abirites, as his son Gideon was beating out wheat in the wine press to hide it from the Midianites. The angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, The Lord is with you, you mighty warrior. Some version will say, You mighty man of value. Gideon was looking at himself as, as a, a nobody, the man without strength. But the angel was addressing Gideon, oh, you mighty man of value. And some of us, sometimes we look at ourselves, we look down on ourselves. God has made us mighty men of value. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then, the cowardly Gideon went on to lead Israel in a great victory over the Midianites. They never appeared to the wicked. Angels are God's agents to his people. Never do we find an angel appearing on an evil person to warn them of impending disaster. When God was going to send a flood to the earth, he warned the people through Noah, not an angel. You remember when um, the Lord was going to wipe off the, uh, the, the earth, it was only the house of, uh, household of Noah that was saved. Even though when Noah was constructing the ark, he was telling them, repent, there's going to be a flood, there's going to be a judgment. They're not listening. <laughs> Just like some nation right now. They have turned their deaf ear to the warning of the Lord. God is sending his servant, the prophet, to them, but they turn their deaf ear as if they are not hearing until when they fall into judgment. When they fall into judgment, things will begin to go haywire. May we not fall into judgment. But before we go into judgment, any nation fall into judgment. You know what God is? God will come. One of the, I'll use Nigeria as an example. I remember a few years ago, the Lord told me I was on the mercy seat for Nigeria. I was on the mercy seat. If my people will seek me, I will have mercy upon Nigeria. But they did not repent. Instead of repenting, the blood is even flowing more. The blood, innocent blood, are shed daily. In hundreds. And then judgment come. So what we are seeing in Nigeria is the judgment of God. Period. But God will always send an angel first. These angels will send in the form of prophets. He can send angels, the real angel from heaven. And he can also use the servant, the prophets. The role of the prophet is to give warning. Is to give warning to nations. Is to give warning to leaders that are wicked. God is saying that I will send my my prophet to you. So when the, when when we are when the nation is a, we are sinning like we are in Nigeria and some other countries, I'm telling you, if we are what we are going through in Nigeria is the judgment of God. When God was on the mercy seat, is over. But now we are in judgment. But if we will turn, if we will humble ourselves as a nation, and we cry out to God, Mahali Kapora Mashaya Katanda, if only we will cry as a nation, Mali Kamosaha, God said, I will hear your prayer, and will turn away. He will not judge the land. But as long as we continue to kill, as long as we continue to destroy what God has built, <laughs> judgment. Judgment of God will fall on nations like that. Hallelujah. You know, God never appears to wicked people. No. God will never send his angels to warn wicked people. No. Because why? They are already lost. Those ones have been classed to be destroyed. God will only send his angels to his own people. Masha Dr. Ladi, God bless you. My daughters, 
Timothy, um, Timothy, Timothy, God bless you, Pastor. So tonight I'm teaching on the subject of the ministries of the angels. What did they do for us as prophets? What did they do for us as people? So God will never send his, people, um, his angels. Angels are God's agents to his people. Never do we find an angel appearing to an evil person to warn them of impending disaster. When God was going to send a flood to the earth, he warned the people through Noah, not an angel. For I'm going to read it. Matthew chapter 24, verse 37 to 39. For as the days of Noah were, so were the, will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day Noah embarked the earth. And they knew nothing until the flood came and swept them all away. So too with the coming of the Son of Man. May that not be our portion. May we be the sons of Issachar who know the timing and the season of God. I repeat that. I said, may we be like the sons of Issachar who know the timing and the season of God. When God is sending us a word in season, may we know, may we discern that this is God sending his word to us through his angels. The angels can be in form of angels from heaven. It can be in the form of the prophets. Good angels only appear to righteous people. The angels are sent, they came at important times. Like in the miracles recorded in the scriptures, angels seem to have appeared at crucial times in the program of God. For example, we find them giving praises at God's creation, guarding the Garden of Eden after the fall. Involved, they were involved in the giving of the law and center stage in events in the life of Christ, the birth, the temptation, and when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, in his resurrection, and in the ascension. They will also appear at his judgment on the uh, of the nations. When God comes back again, his angel, he will come with the host of angels. Glory be to God to judge the earth. Hallelujah. Amen. So when God God sends his angels to, to, to you know to us at important times. Hallelujah. Then God, these angels, they come as service to God. You know, the role of the angels also, in the book of Revelation chapter 4, we saw that the angels in heaven, all they do 24 hours a day, the angels, the host of angels, the 24 elders, with their crown, they cast their crown down and they cry, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. When the angels, they all, that's, that is what the role of the angels are. They cry, Holy to God. The four beasts before the Lord, they cry, Holy. What is the lamb that was slain? That's the role of the angels. And a multitude of angels in heaven. They, they all bow down. So if you don't like to worship, the role of the angel is to worship. When we descend get to heaven, our role is to worship the Lord. It is to worship the Lord. I remember many years ago, the Lord told me to study, to meditate on the book of Revelation chapter 4. For one month, I could not move from this chapter. When I wanted to open all that scripture, the Lord said, no, my daughter, stay here. On the day 30, I was on this scripture. The heaven opened to me. Glory be to God. The Lord opened the heaven. Oh, my Hale, my Sata. And I saw when you see the when you see the Lord, you can't even look at him. I could not look at his face. The glory of the Lord, Mahai Kapora, Basai, Katonda, Rabahai Kamanda. The glory of the Lord was so strong. The angels, and I saw, I said, wow. All I knew to do was to lie down. I just, I fell down dead, right? And all that came out from my mouth was, Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. That was what was coming out. And the Lord started giving gifts. I saw him. He was giving some people pots. He was giving some people wallets. He was giving some people bags. So he was giving some people half coat. Glory be to God. The Lord gave me a long coat. <laughs> Glory be to God. So God, in fact, when we get to heaven, 
<laughs> I don't know how we're going to be. When we all get to heaven. <laughs> what a day of rejoicing it will be. When we all get to heaven. So we need to <laughs> do everything in your power to make heaven. Anything that will stop you not to make heaven. Please, no matter how good it is. Discard it. When we all get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing that will be. What a day of rejoicing. Hallelujah. Just as the host of angels are, are rejoicing over us. The saints that have come. So are the angels of the Lord. Angels come. They act as service to God. Although the great amount of biblical references with respect to, um, to angels refers to their service towards humanity. Their most important ministry is, is service to God. We are told that certain types of angels un unceasingly worship the Creator. Just as I was saying to you, you know, in, Re in Revelation chapter 4, verse 8, and the four living creatures, each one of them having six wings, are full of eyes around and within. And day and night, they do not cease to say, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God of. of the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and who is to come. That's all they were saying. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and who is to come. Glory be to God in the highest. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Angels come as much, they come up to motivate us, to, to motivate us. What motivates the angels in their ministry to human is not their own love for, love for them, but rather their love and devotion to God. Their love and devotion to God. That's what motivates the angels. The work of angels can be placed in three categories, just as I said before. Number one, they are God's agents who execute the judgment of God. Whenever God wants to judge a nation, God will send an angel. May our nations not be judged in the name of Jesus. Angels, they are God's um, angels. They are God's ag um, agents who execute His judgment on the earth. Angels are God's messenger, revealing His will to us. Thirdly, they are God's servants, doing His will. They have also appeared at crucial times in the overall program of God to do. The Lord's bidding. Consequently, their work has been of the utmost importance in God's overall plan of humanity. Glory be to God. So we can see that the role of the angel for us, they are awesome. The angels are not just, they're not just here to protect us. Yes, that's part of their role. But there are so many things, as I said, you have to go through this message so you can see what three categories these angels, their work are. They come as God's angel. The first category, they come as God's agent on planet Earth. And what did they come to do? They come to bring judgment. <laughs> judgment to some nation that are, they, they, do not, they, they don't fear God anymore. Some people even say there's no God. But they are liars. <laughs> There is a God in heaven. There is a God in heaven. And who sends his angels? They, these angels, they come as an executor of God's judgment. When God wanted to send execute in the time of Sodom and Gomorrah, he sent an angel, two angels, who blinded the people in the house and brought out Lot. Hallelujah. Angels, are God's messenger revealing his will to us remember it was angel Gabriel that came to Mary the virgin to announce to her that she's going to be the chosen one the chosen mother of Jesus with a special woman she was a virgin betrothed to Joseph but the angel of the Lord the spirit of the Lord hovered around her and she became pregnant Supernaturally. Oh, la basanda yaha. Thank you, Jesus. Thirdly, the angels, they come, they act as God's servants, doing his will. They act as God's servants. 
So you need to please go back and read and just listen to this message. Tonight, as I'm reading it, I am happy. You know why? When I'm teaching, I am, I am learning as well. I am learning and teach. When I'm teaching, I am learning. I don't know it all. When I study, the Holy Spirit will give me the word. I'll pray. I ask Him to. I yield myself, my vocal cord. I turn my. Ask Him to turn my mouth into His mouth of instruction, so that as many that are listening tonight, your angel may you not miss your angel. Hey, may you not miss your angel of. In your hour of visitation, may you not miss God. May we not miss God. May I not miss God. When God sent an angel to us, may we discern. Do you know that some angels, they come in the form of human beings, right? But because of us, when we close our bounds of mercy to people, we don't even know if those people are angels sent from God to you. But because we shut our bar of mercy, we miss that Kairos moment. We miss the visitation. May we not miss that hour in the name of Jesus. May we always be dis have our discerning spirit. May we ask God to increase our spirit for discernment. So we can know when, this, when these angels are released to us. Hallelujah. You know, uh, the, angel, the role of the angel is awesome. It's beautiful. They have so many things that the Lord sends them to do to us. They come as encouragement. They come as God's agent. They come, God send them in the time of judgment of nations or people. They come with authority. Yes. When angels were sent to do the will of God, they acted with authority. At the tomb of Jesus, two angels were sent to roll the stone that was covering the mouth of the tomb, of the cave. Hallelujah. So, Suddenly, that was in the book of uh, Matthew chapter 2 verse 4. And suddenly there was a great earthquake. For the angel of the Lord descended from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. For fear of him, the God shook and became like dead men. My God. <laughs> oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, 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 something happened when I call you. Don't mind my croaky voice. Jesus, 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 something happened. Whenever we are in trouble, God will send his angels to us to deliver us. You don't even know when you are sleeping. God will send your guardian angels, they are guarding you. Let me tell you. Every one of us, God has given us an individual angels. But your angels will not do anything. They will follow their arms like this. They will be watching you until you give them instruction. Give them an assignment to do. I'll give you one small example. A few years ago in Nigeria, I went to a bank. And while I was on the counter, I forgot my mobile phone. I left. I was in the taxi halfway to my house. Then I, re I realized that I wanted to use my phone. My phone was gone. I said, wow. Nigeria of all places. You're kidding? So immediately I knew. I said, Lord, I deploy my angels. I said, you my angels. Go to, I deploy you to that bank. Whoever is holding my phone, arrest that person. Why? I sent my angels on assignment. Do you know by the time I got back to the bank, the security guard came to meet me. He said, madam, you forgot your phone. Somebody handed it in. Why? I instructed my angel. Sorry. I instructed my angel to go after the, the person who has taken my phone. Another time, this was so funny, you know. We went for, uh, I think it was Feast of Esther here. And these are women of God. While I was waiting in the reception, I just bought my new glasses. And I had it on my bag. I ran to the room to go and get something. By the time I came back, my glasses was gone. My God. I said, what? I can't believe this. Even as among ministers of God, who would have taken my glasses? Immediately again, I deploy my angels. I said, Lord, arrest it. whoever it is that has stolen my, my glasses. Oh, Lord, arrest them. I sent my angels on assignment. So if you don't walk your angels, they will sit down, they will fold their arms. They will be looking at you. 
until you strengthen. They are, they are what? They are messengers God has sent to us. Until you know how to utilize your angels. Until you know how to instruct your angels. Until you know how to, even when you are going to bed. Tell your angel, God, be, be on guard. If you don't tell them, they will stand there, they'll look at you. Give them instruction. They have been sent to us as, as what? Messengers from heaven to us. Until you know how to utilize your angels. Your angel will protect you. Angel will save you. God will send when an important inf information needs to be, or something heavy needs to be paid on earth, God will send an angel. He will send an angel. When Jesus was supposed to be birthed, the Lord, the Lord sent an angel, Gabriel. Angel Gabriel brings good news. He's an archangel. One of the heavy gods in heaven was sent to Mary. Imagine a young virgin who was betrothed to be, to be married to Joseph. But, the, but she found favor. Favor. She found favor in the sight of God. An archangel Gabriel was sent to Mary. When God wants to bring deliverance, he will send Archangel Michael. <laughs> Michael is a warring angel. So whenever you have difficulty, apply, call on him. Pray and call him down. Call Archangel Michael down. Tell him to bring his warring angels. Angels with flames of fire. Yes. You have the right to call the assistance of the angels. But as I said, if you don't utilize them, they will be looking at you. They will be looking, they won't do anything for you. But I pray that you and I will know how to instruct our angels. We will know when God is sending an angel to us. Sometimes you see some, beg some people are begging, right? We think they are just beggars. Maybe God just wants to test you. Mm -hmm. So want to see your heart. Maybe you've closed your bar of mercy. You've closed your bar of compassion. May we not do that. So sometimes, even though I don't like to give to beggars sometimes, because some of them are diabolical, that's why we pray. When you pray, God will speak to your heart. If it's of God, just give. And leave the rest to God. So tonight's message, I believe, has been a fantastic um, um, teaching on, on ministering ministries of angels. Angels are very, very important to us. Please. May we not miss our angels. May when God sends our angels to us, may we not miss our angel. And that angel can come in the form of, of a prophet. You know that. Everybody has got God. There's a particular prophet God appoints to you, even to leaders of nations. This is where the spirit of discernment comes in. When they look at the vessel God is using, they miss the mark. When God sends your, your particular angel to you, don't close your eyes. Hmm. May you not miss your hour of visitation. When God sends your angel to you, may you not use your hand to drive them away. May you not pursue them. Hey, Masoko Ramashada. May you not. God has looked from heaven and he sent his angels to you. That angel can come in a, in a form of a human. He will come in the form of angels. I've seen an angel before. Many times. I'll give you this one and I'll, I'll share this um, testimony and I will close. Most of us know Pastor Chris Oyakilome. Um, he's, the, uh, he's the general overseer of um, Christ Embassy. You know, many years ago, I just used to look at this man. I know that, you know, he operates in the miraculous. He operates in healing, gift of healing. You know, but until God really opened our eyes to see something, you don't really know who we are in the spirit. On this particular occasion, I had a vision. And in this um, vision, we, I was among the, uh, the pastors, ministers of God. Pastor Oyakilome was having a pastor's conference. I was sit and I was sitting right in front. And the hall was jammed. Pastor Yak Chris brought out brought out gold pendants in a heart shape. Gold pendant in a heart shape. And he gave it to all the pastors that were there. But he came to me and said, you. So I said, me. He said, yes, stand up. I stood up. I held on to my 
the gold pendant he's giving me with others. And he said, there's something different about you. Follow me. I followed him into the office. When we got into this office, he gave me a, a platinum, another gold and another platinum, platinum heart-shaped pendant again. So making mine too. He said to me, don't tell them. Don't show it to them. So I came back to the, uh, <laughs> to, the to the auditorium where the rest were. So after the conference, I went back to Pastor Chris to go and say, thank you. I am telling you what I saw shook the very foundation of my life. When I got to his office, I saw this huge, massive angel. His head was almost to the ceiling. Big angel. Jesus. I froze. I shook. I said, God. So, so I, he knew, that the angel knew I was scared, Steve. He said to me, do not be afraid. Who are you looking for? I couldn't speak. Uh, he said, calm down. I said, I can Then eventually I said, I'm looking for Pastor Chris. I said, I wanted to come and say, thank you. Then he rolled like this. And I moved in. When I opened my eyes, my body was literally shaking. That was the day I knew. I said, Lord, for you to assign an angel, a big massive angel to Pastor Chris or Yaklimon, that means this man must be very, very precious in the hand of God. <laughs> I'm telling you. From that day, I'm telling you the way my respect for that man of God increased. Why? For God to issue, to send a massive angel like that to protect Pastor Chris or, or, or Yakilomi. <laughs> In the eye of God, this man must be special. Must be special. So let's not judge people by people's appearance, the way they look. No. Leave that to God. God searches the content of our heart. Because otherwise, I mean, for me to see this kind of angel, and ever since I've never seen an angel like that again. Ever since that day, I saw that massive angel. His head was almost to the ceiling. Massive. This is the angel that was guarding, protecting Pastor Chris Oyakulam. God just wanted me to see this. To know the kind of anointing this man is carrying. Unusual anointing, I'm telling you, was a heavy one. May the Lord bless us. Please, I need you to help. Do me a favor tonight. Can you help me share it to your friends? Show it to your group? Share it to your WhatsApp group? Put it on your story. And um, the Lord bless you as you do that. Because most of us don't know the role of the angels God has given to us. May we not miss them. May we, our discernment be up. May we know when God is sending his angels to us. In the name of Jesus. I just want to thank God for what God has done tonight. You know, when I come in the school of the prophets, when I, um, I was born a prophet, but you can be a child and not know your role. It wasn't until about 20 years ago plus that um, the Lord now brought me proper into my um, office of a prophet when I met my father and the Lord, Dr. Lukoya. And then um, God used him tremendously, you know, to shape this ministry, my, uh, to shape my life and my ministry. And I just want to thank God for his life, you know. Most of all of us prophets, please, if you are a young prophet, find a, an experienced prophet. You trust his anointing. Sit under their tutorial. It's very, very important. Don't say, oh, I am a prophet. I know it all. No, no, no. It's a mistake. There is always Elisha, Elijah. There's always Elijah, Elisha mode. Elijah was the, the boss. Was Elisha was under tutorial until he received double the anointing upon the life of Elijah. So it's very, very critical that as a young prophet, please find somebody. Pray. Let God show you. There are so many genuine um, prophets of God in the world. Let God show you who you want to sit under in the name of Jesus. And you will learn. I sat under the tutorial of the Holy Spirit, number one. I sat under the tutorial of Dr. Lukoya, because he's a prophet as well. Then I read a lot of books. I went to Bible school. I continued to study every day. I, I fast, I wait on the Lord. That's the only way to sharpen your prophetic. And then speaking in tongues. 
Hmm. When you speak in tongues, you are sharpening. In fact, you are edifying yourself. Your prophetic will be very, very sharp. You, and it will be full of accuracy. Except on occasion when it's being manipulated. But the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. We're not going to say because... Um, I want to encourage some prophets because I noticed from the time of um, Donald Trump when so many of us gave a prophet, um, prophetic message, which I was included, that the Lord said he was going to win the second time. Believe you me, what I heard the Lord say was accurate. Because some prophets, they have read from them, they ran and hid. Come out of your cave. Don't because of Jezebel's spirit run and hide in that cave. Come out. There's still work for you to do. Don't be intimidated. If you miss it, you will miss it tomorrow. And I know because when I asked the Lord, he told me the reason why that prophecy did not come to pass. Because you see, prophecy is subject to so many things. The fact that God gives us a word of prophecy does not mean it's automatic. Mm-hmm. You pray and war in the spirit to keep your prophecy. Yes. If you do, if God tells you to, and you are not warring in the spirit, then the enemy will come and steal it. Then it depends on the content of the heart of that person. If they are prideful, if they are arrogant, all those things, God checks it. So, as a prophet, please, don't blame yourself. Don't go and hide yourself. Some people have people said, oh, because they got it wrong, they are no more prophet. Then you are not called in the first place. You are not called in the first place. Was Jesus our master not called it? He was, he too was called a false prophet. But he was not. So I'm just here to encourage you tonight on this ministry of angels. Please, let's listen to the message time and time again. And then the scriptures I've used, please take time to study the scripture. So that you you be, you, you know you will know the role of the of the of the angels that God sends to us. May the Lord bless you, and may the Lord keep you. Also, before I close, you know earlier on when I started, I said that if you are a pastor in United Kingdom, if you are a minister of God of the gospel, Nigerian Embassy, there is an umbrella organization called Canuk, which say we Canuk represent Central Association of All Nigerians in the UK. And everybody, some people, some states from different states of Nigeria, some organizations, some, you know, they, um, some groups, they all come under this mighty umbrella, which is registered, recognized and registered with the embassy here. So the chairman of Kanuk, Ayo Akin, Mr. Ayo Akin Fem, called me prophetess, please help me to organize, tell the pastors, if you are a pastor in the United Kingdom, all we needed is 20 pastors and we will be, we will be registered as clergymen with the, of this umbrella called Canop. That means we are going to be rec recognized in case anything happens. You need time of, uh, we can mix with others, you will know what is going on around you. So let's not be a, a free ranger, let's join this mighty umbrella called Canop. Um, I've known Canop and I've, uh, I've been part of it for many years. May the Lord bless us in Jesus' name. If you're watching me for the first time, my name is Dr. Margaret Mayaki. By the grace of God, I'm the general overseer of a ministry called Sanctuary for the Broken Hearted Internationals. Where God has raised the dead to the glory of God. God has brought countless healing to people that had cancer, lupus, different kind of diverse kind of sicknesses. And God has brought, made a lot of women joyful mothers. And this ministry also is a prophetic ministry that God has sent to leaders of the world, uh, president to kings. And uh, the Bible says, the gift of God in us will make room for you. So don't say you are a woman, he, I, um, because you are a woman, you, um, God cannot use you. No! Look at Deborah in the Bible. Look at Esther. Look at Hannah. So many of them, Hilda. Then when you look at the, the present world, look at people like um, Catherine Kuhlman, Emma, um, Amy McPherson, Maria Etta, and so many. Even in our present world, look at Joyce Meyer. Yes! Paula White. Yes! Their God is using them. 
So don't say because you are a weaker, you're a woman, you are a weaker vessel. No. You are filled with the Spirit of God. You are filled with His anointing. You are special in the hand of God. If only you know who you are in Christ. He said, those who know who they are, they shall be strong and they shall do mighty exploits. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. Please, if this ministry has been a blessing to you, I just want to thank those of you that have been supporting the work of this ministry. Those, those of you, my partners, those that have been sowing seed. I often not, I've, in fact, rarely do I ask people to support the work of this ministry. I am not a church base, so we're a ministry, we need your help. Please support this ministry. So your tithe on my, on my page on Facebook, I've got a PayPal page where you can support um, the work of this ministry. And as you do that, know that you are sowing into a very fertile ground. No one that has ever sown seed into this ministry. And God does not bless them. And those of you that have been staunch supporters, you know who you are. May the, heaven, may the Lord bless you. May the Lord open his heaven over you. Give us, they will never lack. They don't lack. You will always be on top. In the name of Jesus. God bless you. Until I come your way again next week, Friday, for School of Prophets. May the Lord bless you. But meanwhile, I can come in between in the week if the Lord gives me a word. And then um, I, will, I will surely come and deliver that word. Please pray for me. I need your prayers. I need your prayer. Pray for every pastor. You know, this morning I put on my page that please intercede for pastors. Intercede for men and women of God. They, a lot of them are going through hell. But because they don't have anyone to say it to, they don't have anyone to cry. Do you know how many people they drop out of ministry? Because they are discouraged. The burden is too much. They don't have anybody to support them financially, spiritually. You know, please, I am asking, using this medium, I need to raise at least 50 intercessors that are going to be praying for me. If you want to be an intercessor to me, to my ministry, to myself, please, I need you. I need your help. I need people that can be praying. You see, it's when the intercessors are praying, you are flaming, the fire is going up. The fire is going up. So I am asking if God has laid it upon your heart to be one of my intercessors that are going to be praying for me, praying for the ministry, please let me know. And as you do that, the Lord bless you. Until I come your way again, and the Lord bless you. Shalom, peace of God to you. God bless you. Please help me share this message.